According to the latest rankings, among the top 10 fastest supercomputers in the world, the United States occupies five seats, while China only occupies two seats, which are the sixth-ranked Sunway Taihu Lite and the ninth Qianhe 2. At the same time, according to public data, the current computing power of Sunway Taihu Lite is less than one-tenth of that of the frontier in the United States. But what I want to tell you is that to understand the strength of a country's supercomputing, in addition to the computing speed of a single supercomputer, it is also necessary to look at the number of supercomputers that a country can make on the list. In addition, in terms of the speed of a single supercomputer, China used to be the number one frequent visitor. It is worth noting that China has not submitted the test data of the exascale prototype this time. In fact, China used to be an active participant in the ranking, but it has become more reluctant to share supercomputing information because of trade frictions with the US in recent years. Washington has put at least 12 Chinese entities associated with supercomputing on an export blacklist, including Sugan and National Supercomputing Center in the eastern city of Waxi, the developer of the once dominant Sunway Taihu Light supercomputer. Now, do you still think China's supercomputing is backward? What is supercomputing? Why can it attract the attention of major powers in the world? I am Tech Teller, the person to tell you the opinions that are worth spreading every day. Okay, let's continue the topic we are talking about. As the place where computers were born, the United States has a natural advantage in developing supercomputers. In the 1950s, the US government began to regularly allocate money to fund the development of cutting-edge high-performance computer technology for military applications. Until the 1990s, the United States almost dominated the supercomputer competition. As computer technology is gradually mastered by countries around the world, the pursuit of supercomputers has gradually become more competitive. After all, countries around the world have also seen the huge role and potential of supercomputers, and the development of supercomputers has become a must-need for major countries. Then, what does exascale supercomputing mean? Why are all countries making every effort to pursue the computing level of this order of magnitude? For example, exascale supercomputing is the goal of all countries at this stage. This level of magnitude can help countries solve the looming energy crisis and climate and environmental problems, such as nuclear energy. When superpowers such as China, the United States, and Russia possess nuclear weapons, the United States will conduct nuclear weapons experiments in some sea areas. However, the explosion of nuclear bombs will cause pollution and have an associated impact on the ocean and the global environment. Using supercomputers, scientists can conduct subcritical nuclear tests in the laboratory, with the same effect as a real nuclear test explosion, but also avoid many unpredictable negative legacy symptoms, not only in the fields of energy and climate, but with ultra-fast reaction speed and calculation speed, supercomputers can perform more complex tasks including scientific research such as exploration of the origin of the universe, observation of meteorological changes, decryption of encrypted data, oil exploration, engineering physics, nuclear weapons experiments and other highly sophisticated military experiments. Supercomputers are an important tool of a country. They can be used to predict earthquakes and tsunamis, they can replace humans in high-risk operations. They also play a very important role in the research of medicine and artificial intelligence. Because of these promising applications, exascale supercomputing is also considered a super arms race between major powers. The US Air Force and the Department of Energy are the end users of Frontier, and according to media reports, Frontier may first be used by the US military rather than in programs that benefit all of humanity. Since supercomputing is so helpful to the country's development, does China really lag behind in this field? The purpose of the Global Supercomputer 500 list is to promote the exchange and cooperation of the world's supercomputers. But just like scientists have national borders, this list is also a stage for countries to compete, 
and the things to consider are not only the outcome of the data. Take a look at the development process of Chinese supercomputers, and you will understand. In 1946, the world's first supercomputer was born in the United States, while China's first supercomputer was born in 1983. China started relatively late, but what foreign countries did not expect was the speed of China's rise. In November 2010, the supercomputer Tianhe, one developed by China reached the summit for the first time, sending its own voice to the world and keeping the record for about a year. In the second half of 2013, the supercomputer Tianhe, two developed by China reached the top again, and it remained the first in the next four rankings. At this time, an interesting thing happened, because the Tianhe, two used chip technology developed by Intel Corporation of the United States. So the United States imposed a chip embargo on China in 2015, trying to defeat China. Is its purpose fulfilled? Well, facts show that it still underestimates China. In June 2016, the Sunway Taihu Light of Chinese research ranked first in the world. This time, it did not use American chips at all, proving China's strength. Although the upgrade of Tianhe, too has been affected, it has won the championship and runner-up together with the Sunway Taihu Light for four consecutive years. In this year's list, although China is temporarily unable to rank in the top five, according to the list, among the 500 supercomputers with the strongest computing performance in the world, the number of supercomputers deployed in China ranks first in the world, 173 units, accounting for 34.6% of the overall share. In addition, before the announcement of this ranking, the British Financial Times said that China has achieved exascale supercomputing before the United States. The first exascale supercomputing has been running for more than a year, but it has not participated in the ranking. Chinese companies are now more focused domestic competition, not what international rivals are doing. The New York Times also reported that in this competition for supercomputing, the frontier is no match for China's two computer systems, whose operators have not submit test results. In other words, it is not that China lagged behind in the rankings, but that it did not participate in the competition at all. After knowing the above information, let's take a look at another technology that has attracted much attention, quantum computing. How is this technology developing in China? At present, China is the first country to build the quantum science satellite, Mishus, and also the first country to build a quantum network, which connects Beijing and Shanghai with a total length of 4,600 kilometers. In addition, China is committed to creating the world's first and largest quantum laboratory. All in all, in China, quantum technology has become the focus of the 14th Five-Year Plan Development Strategy and has been mentioned many times in policy documents. In the future, whether it is supercomputing or quantum computing, I believe that China has the strength and confidence to climb to the top. Okay, that's all for today. Please put your comments below, and share your insightful ideas with other people. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. We will see you in the next video.